Hello, in this video I will show you how to install this fuel injection system from Edelbrock, uh, the new version of the ProFlow 4 system. And it will be installed in my 351 Windsor engine. It's a 410 cubic inch stroker engine. And I will show you a little bit about that. Anyway, here's the box and let's start to open it. So let's start opening the box. I will, don't, I will not do a complete unbox video. It takes too long time. I just will rip it open and uh, show you how it's delivered. Uh, it must be the biggest box I ever got from a part. It's huge. Well, great to have everything in one box. Let's see. This is the first time opening. So there we have it. So let's unpack this, some manuals. That's the same you can find online, just print it out. That's the cover. And let me do this. this and closer to the so, can you see a little better so here's the intake manifold the manifold looks like an rpm manifold air gap but of course EFE everything is assembled Maybe this is a pressure sensor a throttle body a TPS sensor throttle position sensor and this is idle control valve else I think that's it quite few things can happen here no electronics here besides the sensors of course but no, no sensitive parts well, this is probably maybe air in air temperature inlet temperature or pressure ah I don't know Looks very nice. That's that. Let's take this away and open the other stuff. Tablet here, or of course not an iPad. <laughs> Some cheap Android device, I think. Acer, yeah. Nice size, anyway. And here's the ECU. I think they would pack it in somewhere. This is a support. Oh, it looks so nice. Rubber insulated. 
can take vibrations. Okay. Next. Gaskets. Edelbrock gaskets, of course. Some thing. Lots of wiring, I will not open this until it's, until it's time. And finally, the final piece in here, the distributor. Can we look a little bit closer on that? Distributor looks like the MSD distributor, or actually, as very similar to the Ford old Ford Duras Park system, the same cap size. If I must look inside. Actually this I like. I hate the MSD screws. This is so much quicker and easier to access. Two sensors, I imagine one for the ignition and one for uh, giving a signal to the injectors. Plastic feels a little, little bit flimsy, but this looks exactly like the Dura Spark and MSD version. So. Everybody looks at each other when doing this. Why not? Great. So this will also go back to the bag until I remove everything else. So we we'll put the intake back. Throttle body, tablet, ECU, and a wire harness. Yeah, that's it. So now it's time to start work. So I will now start to disassemble the top end here and uh, I will not show that much about it since most of the installations look different and uh, there is no use to show every detail for my installation. But uh, one advice before you start is to set the engine in a top down setter in ignition sequence. And the easiest way to do that is uh, lift the um, distributor cap and rotate the engine until you get the rotor to point to number one uh, ignition wire. Then you know you have uh, the, the, you have the engine in the correct ignition timing. You can also see it on the timing mark then, hopefully if you have one. So, now I begin. 
Well, now I ripped out the fuel injection and also the distributor is gone. And for you new in this Ford business, I can show you some tip from here. And I should explain a little bit about the cooling water. The uh, cooling uh, water pump sits here and pump in uh, water in here. And the water goes through the intake manifold. And here are the thermostat housing, and uh, water comes out and back. So before you remove this, you have to empty the cooling water. So here's down here on Mustangs anyway. We have a simple little. So let it cool out out I can release the cap then the water comes out much faster since you, you get a vacuum in the system everywhere. like that and uh, now it's time to release the intake manifold there's a couple of bolts here and here release the Heater hoses, also the uh, thermostat house. You don't have to remove this if you don't want. But uh, it could be easier if all these things are removed. Well, keep going. One important step is to figure out how you would put in the wire harness in the car. Uh, so it's a good idea to place it on the floor and uh, mock up everything, how long the cables are and uh, if they will, the, the length will be correct for your application. Uh, also you have to decide where to put the ESU control. Uh, I have decided to have it inside the car since it's the best place to protect it from heat and vibrations and water and everything like that. So, uh, and also it's the prettiest place to put it also in because there's a lot of wires here. Uh, the Edelbrock system has very large connections. Uh, everything is very huge, rectangular plastic pieces so pull it through the firewall will require a big hole so I mocked up this is the hole required not so nice so this is the engine compartment and this is the inside of the engine car so all this should be inside uh, main circuit, main relay, power relay, is you, main power and this will go to the fuel pump, I have my fuel pump in the in tank system so this will be inside and outside the rest of course ignition harness, um, injector plugs and all other plugs map sensor, TPS sensor uh, everything is quite good marked here cooling temperature sensor what do we have here uh, fuel pump, okay, okay and we have air temperature sensor over here we have coil no, sorry, this is the distributor. And this is coil. Well, actually, this will go inside my. I have my ignition box. And this is the ESC control valve. And here we have oxygen sensor. That's critical to measure the length. Well, this annoyed me. So, 
I made a some a little invention. I have a 3D printer, so I designed two plastic pieces, and here's my prototype. So this will clamp in the the, the harness like that, like so. So this will fit inside the rectangular hole. So, yeah, I have only one hand, so I can't put it together. I can't pause. Well, the work continues with uh, the wiring harness. It's a real mess, a lot of wire in this kit, and uh, hard to get them in. Uh, this is the main harness, and I will place it behind the firewall. So here I cut up, will cut up holes, and I have 3D printed out this, uh, yeah, what should call a wiring harness holder, or what we should say. So two of these will sit there, and uh, we see how it go from there. So I just uh, inserted my homemade firewall plug here it's worked perfect so I'm not to touch it yet but uh, this is the principle so that satisfied me so this is the dimension of the hole uh, it must be 40 millimeters high and 50 millimeters wide otherwise you can't uh, insert uh, the contacts we can go inside and look how it looks. It's tight here. So here's the... This is a um, plastic plate uh, where I mounted all the electronics. ECU unit and main switch and uh, uh, main relay, the safe breaker, safety break. This will be bolted here. This. So it's real tight. Uh, here's my CDI box. So uh, everything be tucked in here, protected from vibration and heat. The glove box will still work. So now it's time to connect everything to whatever it should be connected to. So to put on the fuel injection manifold, and I have uh, cleaned the surface areas here with a blade. Make it make sure it's really clean on all surfaces. Should be no gasket left from previous installation. And uh, also be sure to get rid of all grease. This time I use brake cleaner and uh, just uh, grind off all surfaces uh, for any for any grease. And when you're ready, it's time to prepare the gaskets. Uh, these are the gaskets provided with the system. Edelbrock's own gasket. It works just fine, I believe. Uh, I will use uh, RTV silicone on uh, water jackets and this surface here. And water jacket, yeah. Everywhere where you have water jackets, I will use this. And around all intakes, I will use uh, this high temp. Uh, uh, I don't know.
not have too thick here, just so it covers the surface. And then I'll take the finger my finger sealer. This is more like a glue than a Okay, the gasket, don't forget to remove the paper now, this is a good Actually, this, this thinner th sealer is not really super necessary, but um, the instruction said that this should be sealed, so I do as the instruction says. Also, this paper gasket from Edelbrook feels like it needs to suck into something. manufacturer has some kind of sealing material already stuck to it. This is completely dry. So I figured this might be good to have everywhere. Here's a small modification you might need to cut away.
Okay, time for the rear and main front seal. And now it's time for huge bead here. This should be thick. of the excess in the rear. Okay, now it's the critical time to lower down the intake. Actually, this intake didn't fit the Edelbrock heads. There is an interference here. I did not notice that before. So I have to remove the intake to bad and grind this bosses here a little bit. It's not a big deal, but too bad I didn't notice that before. Yeah. So it doesn't clear Edelbrock's own heads. That's funny. Well, remove it and wipe off the gasket before anything more sets. Do this. No big deal at the moment. Just hurry up and I remove this before it sets. Too bad. <laughs> this annoys me a little bit. I used to check everything. But just this is the first time I never <laughs> been on seen this on an intake manifold. 
they usually just bolts on. It's not. I will do this with an hour. Now the intake manifold is on place and uh, also dropped in the distributor. I forgot to film that, but it's very easy. Uh, when drop in, dropping in the distributor, you just have to uh, aim the rotor against the number one cylinder. This is number one. And then you have the sensor here, timing sensor. And one of the tooth is a little bit narrower than the other. You just have to align it. I don't know if you can, if this will work, but like so. And then lock down the distributor. Like that. So now the timing is preset for start. Continue with the fuel system. Well, now I'm beginning to connect all wiring. Uh, that's not so much to show in. Everything is very good marked. So it's just to connect everything where it should belong. And uh, it looks clean so far. I haven't been. So thorough yet, it will, I need to start it before I clean this up, so it look good. Behind here it's a mess, it's a lot of wiring, so uh, this is something to work with later on. About the fuel system, you need to buy a fuel pressure regulator. Uh, this is of course depending on what type of fuel system you have built, but um, in my case I have an in-tank system, pressure pump, that comes in here uh, and into this regulator and regulate it down to 58 psi and then I pulled it here into the fuel rail. Here's the fuel pressure sensor. So this is uh, something you have to calculate in your investment. Okay, now it's time to pair the e-tuner to the to the ECU control, and uh, I have never done this, so I, this will be the first time for you, for me, and for you. So uh, let's see. Uh, we start the setup whistling. Turn on the ECU and press the pairing set. Okay, turn the key on. Okay. Select pairings from the list, okay. See if we can find something. Yeah. ProFlow 4. Boop. What's happened here? Mm. Oh. Once again. Enter zero. Sure. Hmm. Did not. I wonder if it need the uh, code uh, 
stated on the ECU control. Let's see, I took a picture of it. So there's a pin code I can't Let's see. I'm reading the instructions here. Seem to be um six digits. Okay. Well, this didn't work so good. There's no information in the manuals what to what the pin code should be, other than. It should be stated on the ECU control, but... To back this up, do this again. Okay, now I've sorted up some connection problems and uh, how to upload the base map. So let's go through the wizard again. See so we can get it started. So start the wizard. So uploading to uploading the base map to the ECU. Working fine this time. Key off 10 seconds and back on. Important. Uh, okay. Lock the timing. So. Okay. Now we try to start. Start it 
right off. Great. Let's set the distributor. Good. You can continue without fulfilling the goals to warm up the engine. That's uh, a that's great call. When you, everything starts up, you might be stressed and hit the wrong button, but then you're staying on the same thing on the bus. That's great. So I can continue. Now it's time to get too So I can go to...
Yeah, if the throttle position sensor must be. Okay, we start it up again and see if the sensor has to be resetted. like this has to be done in certain intervals like it can take it can't can't that be adjusted more than 10 degrees or so let's see now
well, now it's been a couple of days since I installed the system to my car and I have drive around for about 100 miles or so to have it to learn. Uh, and it's been, so far my experience is very good. It's uh, the engine responds very well, it's crispy, uh, the RPM is very smooth and uh, I can't complain anything. Uh, it's never stalled out for me like maybe some other system done. Um, so I can strongly recommend it. Uh, the build quality is good. Even some details could be better, but uh, I can't complain overall. It's very good. Easy to install. Uh, the software is very easy to understand. Uh, the manuals could be better. Uh, it's a little bit uh, many papers to uh, fill around with. Uh, we could have done the manual quite more easy to understand. Uh, many out there have hard difficult to understand the software and how the phone works and uh, how to uh, use the Bluetooth engagement with the phone. Uh, so that's the only thing I could complain of so far. Uh, so this is how it looks now. I have a modified a stock air cleaner and a little stealthy black. So I will paint this black in winter. Also the intake will be uh, black, blacked out. And uh, also I need to change out the camshaft this uh, winter. So actually the system has been a little sketchy in the low RPM due to the camshaft. It's an aggressive one. Uh, it pulls from 3000 RPM and which uh, Originally, it was built for an automatic transmission with a 3000 stall turbine converter. And when I had that, it was great. But now there's a TKO 600 manual transmission, so the camshaft is not uh, performing at low RPM. And I think the E5 system reacts to that, and it's a little sketchy. In the low RPM. So that's an uh, issue I will address through this winter. Otherwise, it's done. It works nice and um, no problems. See you soon.